All right, guys. For the last couple of episodes, I've been hinting around that I'm going to do uh, an episode on wireless pickups because you've seen this uh, floating around. So, welcome to that episode, wireless pickups. Okay, you hear that? Not only is it hot, but it's windy, hot and windy. So when you hear the noises, that's what's going on. Uh, listen, before we dive into this, I want to get the housekeeping out of the way because the end of this video is really exciting. It's got some comedy and I need that comedic timing to flow. So housekeeping out of the way. At the end of the video is my email address. Send me your questions and comments. I really enjoy that. Uh, next, in the center is the subscribe button. If you click on that one, it will notify you whenever I release a new video. And then there are the rectangular boxes at the bottom of the screen, which are my playlists. One's a the complete set of videos, the tutorials on how to do different parts of building cigar box guitars. And then the other one is the oddball instruments playlist. It's the coffee cans, it's the boards, it's the other stuff. And uh, I swear we're going to do a uh, episode pretty soon about how to build a cane fight for how to burn holes in a, a piece of bamboo. Anyway, all through the video up at the top when you see an eye card pop up, that little eye in the corner up here, it's going to give you a link to something you might find interesting. So let's talk about cables. Cables are a sore subject for me because they're bending, they're breaking, um, I swear some of these cables they want for them the same amount as it would cost you to build a cigar box guitar. So you get a bad connection here. Uh, one of your kids runs to the end of the uh, cable like the dog to the end of a chain, rips it out of the amplifier. You got a bad cable. You got a bad plug in on your amp. It's just a mess. We all got these laying around and for some reason we want to keep them because someday we might fix them or whatever. Pfft. So one day I decided I'm going to try to escape the hassle of the cables and try to find a way to um, just get rid of them and I could play uh, and, um, and not be tied to the amp. I could move around, I could do whatever I do. Now to be honest with you, the first time I saw a set of wireless uh, pickups or transmitters on guitars was Bob Log the third. He uses some kind of transmitter. We can't tell you what that is. I don't even think he can tell me because it's one of those things where if they have to tell you they'd have to kill you. So anyway, this guitar right here, Bob Log guitar, has two pickups. Now if you see him playing, and I'm going to put an eye card up here so you can see him playing a guitar. And, and if you look close you'll be able to see he's got wireless transmitters on the base of his guitar but um, again you know my guitars there's a coil or a humbucker and a piezo and so they each have different pickups or separate pickup uh, or jacks excuse me all right we'll leave that sit there because it's it's pretty and you can also see the coffee can guitar going on here if the camera will let you so anyway one day i decided i'm going to check into this now when you start looking at wireless systems for guitars you easily start jumping up into 250, 300, um, these systems, and they're expensive. They're really expensive. Um, it doesn't seem, well, it kind of seems counterintuitive to me that somebody that's trying to build a guitar for $30 would go out and spend $300 on a, a set of wireless pickups. So anyway, I was looking at some of the lower end stuff. You see them popping up on your Facebook pages and stuff or in the ads. All you got to do nowadays is type into Google something about a pickup. And the next thing you know, within a millisecond, you got ads popping up in your email about uh, pickup trucks, anything with the word pickup. So anyway, when I started looking at these, I was looking at the lower end models. Now, there's some out there that are 30 some dollars, but when you start looking at the customer uh, uh, reviews, uh, some of them don't have good stars, some of them are low stars, they, the, the comments say they didn't work, they broke down, it was hard to get them back and get a new one, especially if you're ordering out of the country. After a little bit of investigation, I settled in on this Joyo set. Um, it has a, a, a transmitter that comes off the guitar body and it has a receiver that goes into your amp. Uh, the model number is the JW 
joy o now um I'm going to get into better detail about this, but the thing to remember about these pickups is, let's say you're running uh, the guitar and also you want to bring a stomp box into it. All these will run off of these, but if you have the same transmitter model, they'll clash with, with each other. So this set, if you're going to buy the set before I forget, I just want to tell you that Joyo makes uh, this model in a in uh, a configuration of one channel or another so if you were to buy one of these and then decide you like it on your guitar and you wanted to buy another set for your your stomp box or you've got somebody else playing a cigar box guitar you'd want to make sure that you tell uh, uh, signifying your order that you're looking for uh, either one or the other or both sets of uh, frequencies so let's get to the bench. I'll open this up and we'll have a closer look at what's in here and how it works. Okay, again, this is Joyo JW01. Again, there's a coding for the uh, same model, but a different channel. So you can end up playing, say, uh, this coffee can guitar on one channel and this uh, stomp box on another. Okay, this is really simple. We pop it open. You got your instructions. I explained to you what's going on. It's self-explanatory. And then you've got this that plugs into the cigar box or the guitar. And you've got this which plugs into the amplifier. Also, you have a charger with a Micro 5 pin connector. Remember that. Micro 5. And then it just plugs in. The other end is a USB that just plugs in to here into the wall and then the charger plugs in like so. Uh, there are no batteries. It's pretty self-contained. Now before I show you how these work, I want to tell you that these Micro 5 cables are, are pretty common. You can uh, find them pretty easily as well as these they sell these at any convenience store but if you get two of these cables you can charge these at the same time if you only have the one that comes with it you're going to end up charging for about two hours on one of these to get a full charge and then it's just easier to have a, another cable and then you can charge both of them at the same time and be done with it hey do you hear my crow friend out there in the background He's trying to get in the video, but he's not a union actor like me, so he's out. Anyway, I got this stomp box here. I'm going to give you I, I'm going to give you an iCard link to that episode. Anyway, the jack is here uh, that goes to the piezo. I'm going to plug this in, and I'm going to turn this on. You're going to see that reddish green light come on right there. So this is working. I'm going to set this off to the side and bring in the micro cube the input jack for like you'd put your cable in i'm going to put the receiver in and i'm going to turn it on and there we go now i know from experience that if i crank up the volume on the stomp box we're going to end up having a buzz so let me move this out of the way okay the amp is about 15 feet away i turn up the volume on the piezo a little bit and it works easy except there's a little buzz can you hear it hear that Zzz. now there's a couple things I can do here I hope you can see this in the camera but there's a button right here that says interference anti-interference so I can push that and hold that and it kind of jumps channels and you can tell by the light turning more green that you're in the right spot and that makes some of the interference go away but guess what there's something going on here that makes the interference worse and that's this so when i put this here you can hear it okay bluetooth also i put the phone down i turn the bluetooth on while they're pairing you can hear all of this so downside to this is if you're in a place where there's a lot of phones you've got a bluetooth printer which i have in my shop for the graphics you're going to pick up 
some interference. But remember, we're playing cigar box guitars here, so it's not a big deal. I can live with it. So let's pull this out of here, get the stomp box out of the way. We'll pull up the coffee can, plug it in, turn it on. That one turned nice and green right away. You still got that buzz, but... So I'll tell you what, for the price, um, you really can't beat this. Uh, I guess you could buy some more expensive ones and see if uh, some of the interference doesn't go away. But for practical applications, I think these things beat for the cost of what two chords that'll be dead in a year would do. This might be the way to go. Okay, so let's close this out by recognizing that there are some interference issues. The world is full of Bluetooth, Bluetooth printers, Bluetooth speakers. Uh, Bluetooth television sets, anything that transmits a signal is going to mess with these. So sometimes you can find these places where these will work perfectly and they don't have a lot of those interference uh, things around. So let's look at a couple of those. Let's start off with the ideal situation where you have dead, and I mean dead silence. Remember why we bought this in the first place? To get away from these. You know, when you're busking, you really don't want a bunch of cables to wind up if somebody's going to come along the range or the park range or the cop. You know, they're going to come and run you off, so you don't want to be standing there winding up cables. You see them come and you just, it's already in your guitar. You grab your stomp box and your guitar and boogie on out of there. Now I'm going to close this episode out with the final example I have and it's probably the most practical one of where you'd want to use this. Now this amp is small, it's meant for the street, but some amps are bigger and every once in a while you'll run across a situation where there's just not enough room for you, your guitar, and your amp. These things allow you to take your amp and put it somewhere else and still play your guitar and still be effective. So let's look at that and I'll see you next episode.